During the commercial break there, Jeff and I were living la vida loca. <laughs> Jeff was like, Ricky Martin's gay. I'm like, oh, shut up. It's true. No. <laughs> My next guest is an extremely talented, genius, clever person. So good night, everybody. <laughs> He's a, he's a New York Times best-selling author, the 10th anniversary of his uh, excellent book, which I've just started. Uh, I've read other ones, I'm just starting this one. Get off my case, Grandpa! I was reading the Harry Potters, all right? Anyway, it's the 10th anniversary of American Gods. It's in stores now. Please welcome the genius of Neil Gaiman, everybody. Neil Gaiman. That's enough. How are you? I'm really good. You, you seem very relaxed, I can tell by your shoulders. Yes. I, I wanted the Judy Jetson ones, but they didn't no, have them no, in makeup. That's, you, that's Pilates, man. You've got to do the Pilates to get these. I, um, I feel that we, this is long overdue. I've been following you on the Tweety Box, and, the, uh, and you, you like things that I like. We should probably be you know, friends, or indeed lovers. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's really peculiar, because... I know all these people who know you, yeah. and we have never met. I know, it's a strange thing. It's almost like a romantic comedy starring Tom Hanks and Mel... In Mel Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be Mel? Yeah, yeah. you'd be Anthony like, man. I, I, I clearly am in a mess tonight for some reason. I, but, um, no, I, th I think, because you, uh, you're on the Tweety, and I, I just read Anansi Boys, which you wrote after uh, American, American Gods. American Gods. It's yeah. not really a sequel, but it's another book with... I'd actually borrowed a character from a book I hadn't written yet, right. which was Mr. Nancy, right. um, and put him in American Gods, and then got round to putting him in a Nancy Boys, and then everyone went, it's a sequel. And I went, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, all right. It well, is. see, <laughs> no, when, you're, when you're writing stuff, like, when, for example, you write a book, it's called American Gods. It's, uh, it becomes a classic, and everyone loves it, and you're very clever, and, uh, you know, and all that. And, <laughs> but what happens is that the book goes out there, and people form their opinions on what things are in the in that world which you have created. Does that mean then that it no longer belongs to you? Do you feel it's off in the ether and it's no longer part of you? It's definitely no longer yours. Right. Um, and but that's just something I got very very used to over the years. It, it, when I was writing comics, yes, you'd, of you'd look around and suddenly you'd, you'd get people dressed like characters I'd written in comics, and then you'd meet people. You don't need to be passive aggressive, man. I only did it a couple of times. <laughs> You were beautiful. No, oh, thanks very much. It, it this really is a Sandman worked. thing. I just thought it looked good on me. That's all. <laughs> but uh, no, it's interesting because you have a following of people not dissimilar to uh, maybe a, a, a very completely uh, the, well, you know, a different type of writer. But where are we going with this? Well, break? I was going to say that Stephen King has this same kind of fanatical group of people that love everything he does, and just, and you have that too. I I do, but I I, I feel much safer with my fans than, than Steve does. <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I remember years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. You might want to rethink that, actually. Uh, <laughs> except for him. Yeah. Um, the the Stephen King years ago telling me stories about how he, you know, come home and found some strange lady living in his attic. Oh, well, that happened to me. And yeah. I've, I'm so far my attic. You know, I go and check sometimes, but. <laughs> Nobody in there. Well, I've read some of your stuff, that, and uh, the, the stuff that's in your attic is probably too frightening for people to go hang <laughs> around with. Do you... Uh, I, oh, you wrote the, the Doctor Who's I did. Well. Yeah. I, well, that, which is another weird thing we have in common. You actually... I mean... Knock it off. You actually have a character I, I, from I my Doctor Who episode yeah, the, the, on your desk. What, what, the glittery ball? No, no, no. no the... Because I, I got to bring the TARDIS to life. Yeah, no, listen, i got to tell you... You I haven't can, seen that I one haven't yet, seen have that you? Yet. I no. can't spoil it for you. No, well, here's the, what I do. I, you, know, you know I'm a hopeless alcoholic. Yes, right, obviously. Right. So I stopped drinking uh, a while ago, but when I drank, I used to binge drink. So I would drink a lot and then stop. And I'm kind of like that with Doctor Who. I, you know, I'd save them up on the DVR, and then, like, i get my big scarf on and my hat, and... <laughs> And I stay at home and I just watch them. You watch them, you, yeah. then you wake up in the morning hating yourself and swearing never to do it again. It's like you know me, man. <laughs>
<laughs> so yes, it's it was episode four of this current season. Yeah, and uh, I like this Matt Smith character. Oh, he's, he's wonderful, he's good, isn't he? Yeah, he, he actually plays this thing of being nine hundred years old and eleven at the same time. Yeah, which I, I yeah, I, he, and also he's very attractively thin. <laughs> also has a very odd chin. I haven't noticed. Very peculiar yeah, chin. Yeah, you've got a writer's eye, I see. Yes. Yeah. I put it into my episode. <laughs> his, his chin, yes. Did you? Is there mentions of his chin? There is that? one chin joke, yes. Really? But only one. That's a spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah, so careful. But it, it, was, it was a feeling of such peculiar power, getting to write Doctor yeah. Who. It Did you was, watch it as a kid? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I was, I, I'm absolutely stereotypical, you know, started watching it age four, discovered Doctor Who because the kids at my nursery school um, do you remember those those bottles of free school milk we used to yes, give kids? Yes, yes. They, they used to give free school milk in Britain to, to kids before Margaret Thatcher stopped. Took it, it away. Uh, yeah, and made us all work up the chimneys. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so we get these little bottles of milk, and what you used to do is you drink them with a straw till you got down to about that much, yeah. and you'd blow into them so you get bubbles coming up. Yeah. Well, we did that. I don't know. You may not. Well, we have to paint, but it's very Absolutely. similar. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I remember. The first time I ever saw all the other kids, they start, instead of doing the blowing thing, they'd drink their milk and then they'd bend the straw over at the top and they'd start moving them around on the table going, I will kill you, oh. I am a Dalek. And I thought, I don't know what this is, but I have to- yeah, I have to be part of this, yeah. And you know, three weeks later, I'm watching it from behind the sofa because there it's was shared yeah. children's knowledge that they couldn't see you. If you were behind if the you sofa. Were behind, you yeah. know, we knew that, that the television was yeah. a window yeah. and monsters could look out of it, but if you were behind the sofa, they'd just think, there's nobody there, it's just a sofa. Right, exactly. <laughs> we have come across miles of the universe. Oh, where'd they go? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're all, where's, it's just sofas. Uh, so I wrote, so I, I love Doctor Who. I, yeah, I worried about it. I, the first, you know, American Gods, I, I loved mythology when I was a kid. Right. But the first mythology that I ever loved was the, the Doctor, Doctor Who movie, mythology. Yeah. I'd, I'd get the annuals at Christmas, I'd have the Dalek world. I, yeah, it's, it's with lovely. these sad little stories about Daleks and... and Cybermen. No, it was always Daleks for me. I mean, Cybermen... <laughs> What's a coming ago? Man. What's a coming ago? Yeah. They were kind of... You know, I mean, okay, there's a bit in Tomb of the Cybermen where they're coming to life. Yeah. You know, that's really scary. But nothing could be a Dalek. No, Daleks are the most frightening. We have, yeah. to, we have to take a break so that Americans can go, what the hell were they talking about? Who's <laughs> uh, talking about it? You're an American now, aren't you? No, no, I still, I kept my, my citizenship. I, I have this fear that the Queen would find out. The Queen would come I, and get you? And no, not if you hide behind the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen's like... Right, if you ever need to hide from Her Majesty, nip behind some furniture. She's confused. <laughs> what, she brings said. Charles with her, he's like, I can hear them. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back with Neil Gaiman. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I'm here with Neil Gaiman. We don't get along. Um, so we know all these people. Uh, the, the you know you know these. You were interviewed last night by Adam Savage from the Mythbusters. I was. Um, Do you enjoy the Mythbusters? I love Mythbusters. Yeah. Mythbusters. It's that that sort of deep primal urge to go. We are giving. We are educating you. We are teaching you. We are we are making the world a better place by showing you how it works. We're blowing stuff we're up. Blowing stuff up. Yeah. yeah. Now listen, have you spent any time in the company of Jamie Heineman, the one with the moustache? I've, I've spent a little time with Jamie. He sort of glared at me. Yes. Um, that means he likes you. Oh, good. Yeah. No, he does that to me. He just looks yeah. around and that thing moves. It's like, it, it's like it senses the air, you know what I mean? This like, is the first moment in time I've just realised Jamie Heineman is Cthulhu, isn't he? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> H.P. Lovecraft, very yeah. nice. Do you enjoy the H.P. Lovecraft? Oh, I loved H.P. Yeah, Lovecraft. Yeah, very nice too. Very scary. I, wait, we're not going back to Doctor Who. It's an American writer. <laughs> Which is like a blogger, except in the olden days. <laughs> now, uh, what about the... Uh, you know what I loved best about H.P. Lovecraft was what? the way his characters kept writing. And, and they get, because you're getting to the end of a really scary story. Yeah. And it's being narrated by somebody and he's writing it. And then he says... In italics, oh God, 
I can hear them coming up the stairs right now. They're knocking on the door. And I always think, who keeps writing? Yeah. <laughs> no, you make a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be time. That's time to put your pants on and leave, really. It actually yeah. is. Yeah. Out the window. No. Yeah, no, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Once, as soon as I finish this, I'm getting crikey. <laughs> Now, listen, tell me, where do you live now, then? You, you I live, live out in the Midwest. You I, live in the I mid have, I have, You're a very uh, typical Midwest. I am. Source, yeah. And I, I have the accent down. Yeah. Oh, now. Right, yeah. Um, but I've got an Adams Family house out there. Really? Yeah. Really? Do you have a hand? <laughs> no. Uh, well, I too. But no, no hand. Bit of a, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, you'd think you could buy them on the internet, because you can <laughs> you buy probably, everything. You, you can buy a version of them on the internet. Yeah, but you want the, pro <laughs> you want the hand that, you know, the house has to judder, yeah. and then you go, mail thing, and then the hand comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, the hand comes out. Yeah, no, you can't get that. No. no. Well, what do you do out there? You just can't get good help these days. No, no, you, well, you can't, get, you can't get a hand on the internet. <laughs> what do you do? Do you, do you, um, what do I do? You I golf, I assume? Uh, never golfed. No, um, no, I'm not I keep surprised. bees. You keep bees? I do. What, in detention? No, I, I, I have... Bees, they live in hives. I know all their names. I, all of them? No, I don't. Well, they all live in hives as far well, as well, I know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. Well, you wouldn't know it. Like, um, if one of them leaves and they screw you, Gabe, and I'm off to Hollywood. You wouldn't know. <laughs> Feel like I'm going to get into reality shows or something. Start his own perfume line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he, he, he could pass himself off as an eyelash. <laughs> Rent yourself out for 10 bucks an hour as an eyelash. Oh, I, don't sting anyone. Just keep blinking. <laughs> So you keep bees, really? Uh, yeah, it's it, one of those sort of weird, mad things that you do when you're a writer and you go, I need a hobby that How could kill me. How can I procrastinate? Me. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you go, I'll go and see how the bees are doing this morning. And you walk down and you go, hello, bees. And they reply? No, they're bees. Right, right, right. <laughs> You'd hope. But yeah, well, they, maybe one day they will reply. Maybe they will form a community and take over your entire house. That's what I've been hoping. Yeah. And possibly form hands out of bees. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. What, someone, uh, a bees that swarm themselves into uh, the human forms. Yes. Yeah, and then they put on suits and pass them and wrap bandages around themselves. <laughs> and then they go into stores and go. <laughs> 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 that, awesome. It's that low humming noise that gives <laughs> them away. Do you know, honey, I think that guy was actually a swarm of bees. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean we have to close the beaches on the Fourth of July? <laughs> No, it'd be all right. Neil, it's an honour to meet you. I, I feel that you should come back more often. I would love to come back. All right, um, then. This is, bring uh, a bee. I, I will bring a bee. Yeah, bring, bring the one. Yeah. And you have to watch my Doctor Who episode. I will, I will. No, I will. It, 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 it was that weird joy of just getting to write a love letter uh, that's to, nice. to this series that you grew up with. It'd be like if somebody let me write an episode of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> It would be a love letter, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, it would, yeah. It would be fast, is what it would be. Uh, <laughs> mouth organ, awkward pause, or touch my glittery ball? You know, because I still have my English citizenship, yes. and the Queen would be angry and all that, I think I've spent a lifetime doing awkward pauses. I wonder if we could... Yes. Could we do the kind of awkward pause where one of us looks like he's going to say something, and then the other one does, but neither of us do? Yeah, that's the nature of the awkward pause. Well, that's... <laughs> okay. Do you, want to, do you want to add anything to it? Sexual undertone? Smell my finger? Anything like that? Uh, could we just have the TARDIS over here? Yeah, we'll have the TARDIS over here. Yeah, set the scene, why not? to see you again. Yeah, it's lovely to be back. You look great. Your hair's been teased. The ladies in makeup did it, and then my wife walked in and said, do it like this, and, and so the normal sort of average game and mop. 
No, it's gone. You've, it's you're, gone. you're like some kind of... Well, it's, I could be somebody else. Well, no, it's not that dramatic, but it does look like you're someone who knows a lot of very clever ladies. I know <laughs> lots and lots of clever ladies. Well, that's They're nice. all back there in the makeup room. Yeah, no. Well, and your, your wife's going to be on the show uh, later on. She is. Yeah, she's, she's going to sing. She's formed the most peculiar supergroup possibly she's, in rock she's, history. Yeah, it's a very odd, uh, odd kind of affair, the way that you... Well, no, it's not an odd affair. It's a marriage, but the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, but you've got this, this very weird and very, to me, very attractive and interesting kind of roadshow going on where you and Amanda have. We, we do. Um, it, it really was just a sort of mad way of. We, we're, we're still trying to figure it out. We got married. Right. We're loving being married. Right. We've also discovered that if we try and go on holidays together, it doesn't work. We're yeah, I can't imagine you sunbathe much. Are you a sunbather? No. No, no. Look at me. You've, you've never really been outside, have you, Neil? <laughs> that's that... That's, that's yes, the yeah. big place with the thing in the yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. big thing with the big shiny thing. I've in heard the, about yeah. the shiny thing. No, it's no. It's terrifying. No, no. no my wanna... people, we stay indoors. We have keyboards. We have darkness. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah, you today know, is you... our day. <laughs> oh, yes. It's Sam Hain today. It is. Good old Sam. Sam Hain. Yeah. 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 It's pronounced Samhain. I call it Sam Hain. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not a writer, Neil, that's why. I was thinking I, I was, that Sam Hain would make a great occult private detective. Yeah, it would, yeah. You know. Sam Hain, private eye. Simon Hain. Simon Hain, I said. That's better. I like it better anyway. <laughs> Plus, it's not yours. Exactly. So I'm taking it. You've got it. It's all okay. Yours. Simon Hain, private eye. Sam Hain. So, private. yes, Amanda and I on the road yeah. doing this um, tour. We decided to do an evening with Neil Gaiman and Amanda Palmer. Do you, you, she's do you gonna sing? sing? Well, no, but I've been roped into it because she's singing and then she's made me. And also, as you, she's your wife, you, you have to do what she tells you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I know that. Well, don't think that. I don't know that. I know. There's when, when some, uh -oh. I know, and that's that's a thing I know. If your wife tells you to do something, do it. Take I out the garbage, do it. Sing in my band, sing. I, it seemed very, very simple. I said, I will read stuff and you'll sing. And except that then she said, good, you'll read stuff. I'll sing, and you'll sing on these following songs. So, oh. <laughs> I think it's nice. Were you ever in a band back in the day? I, I, 1977, age 16, punk. There are embarrassing photos on the internet still. Really? Yes. Really? What did you but you must, have, you must have been. Of course too. I was in you, bands, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. and the glory of 1977 was, awesome. for me, it was that wonderful moment of going... You don't have to be any good. No. You don't have to know what you're doing. You just have to get up there and make a lot of noise. And you, the fact that you cannot dance didn't matter because you could no. pogo, which was jumping yeah, up and down. Yeah, just jumping up and down, yeah, yeah. Or the dead fly just lying on the ground. <laughs> which was fine until the people who were pogoing next to you decided yeah, to... Yeah, they jumped up and down, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, you could be dangerously hurt. Now, yeah. you twittered me... I did, yeah. When I was in I Edinburgh. You all the, I, I know you, on the you do, you, you, on the Tweety thing. But I was in Edinburgh. And I asked you to get the haggis. You did. Did you get it? Yeah. Where is it then? Oh, you didn't. You did? Oh, yeah! Now, hang on. Be before... Before I present this to you, oh, formally, as right. a haggis, I just want to tell the nice people in your studio audience... Hello. <laughs> I told him, he, he said, get me a haggis. And I said, you're actually asking me to smuggle a haggis into America. <laughs> and he said, yes. <laughs> and I said, what happens if I go to prison? And he said that he would send an intern to visit me. <laughs> I think that's fair. That's love. Oh, thank you so much. And it's a McSween's. Is it a vegetarian haggis? It is a McSween's oh, vegetarian haggis. thank you so much. Probably the only one in America right now. This is amazing. <laughs> Do you want your cushion back? Uh, it's actually, I stole it from your production people. <laughs> you guys have cushions? <laughs> I, I said, I'm going to give them the haggis. They said, I said... Do you have a velvet cushion that I can present it on? Because nice. it looks so sad. It's not sad at all. It's like a little. It's like a little rock of tasty. <laughs> you want to. You want to try this? I'm telling you, vegetarian haggis is the way to go. And people say, well, how can it be haggis if it doesn't contain innards? And, and, I, the sh and, and not wrapped in the. I mean, was it wrapped in the stomach of a vegetarian sheep? Or no, but it's. <laughs> it's wrapped in the stomach of a vegetarian. <laughs> No, this isn't. This is this is lovely. So it's, it's meats and pulses and uh, not meats. Uh, you know, pulses. The things that aren't. Meats. Yeah, yeah. The things like that are not. Pulses. Everything that's not meat in Scotland. Bits of old chair. You know. 
stuff like that. No, you were in Scotland. What David, were you doing in Scotland? What was then? I doing in Scotland? I, love, I got a house there. Uh, really? Where? Isle of Skye. Wow, it's lovely up there. It's absolutely beautiful. Remote. I don't go there enough. It's incredibly remote. All of my wife's family originated on the Isle of Skye. Coincidentally, I had a, you know, it was one of the first things we ever talked about. Really? She said, my family come from Skye. I said, good Lord, I have a house there. Which meant Let's that get when, it on. When, it, was, it was, came shortly when, afterwards. When we actually got married. Uh, well, no, we got married in January in a very sort of secret, elopey kind of thing. But then when we did the family party, we had it on Sky. It's lovely. And it was great. It was a sort of combination of her relatives in kilts and my North London Jewish relatives and they're staring at each other from across the room and then at one point we actually did the, the Jewish marriage chair dance while the bagpipes played, which may be the first time that's ever happened in human history. No, no. My second wife <laughs> was a Jewish girl. And we did the chair dance and I was wearing the kilt, which is a dangerous thing to do when you're wearing a kilt and you're wearing chair <laughs> People were fainting. I was like, sorry, sorry, it's traditional. And they were like, wait, he's not Jewish either. And I'm like, no. That's, <laughs> that's a true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, uh, it was quite the scene. All right, I, I can relate. Yeah. But, you know, yours will work out better than mine. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> oh, it's lovely there, though. I do love... I was in Scotland last week, you know. What were you doing there? Yeah, I was poking around. <laughs> Officially, this is something they hire you to do. Poke. Yeah, they poke around. Go poke and have around. a look over there. See, oh. if there's, see if there's any mice in that hole there. Now, that was because, you know, you have to keep your feet on the ground. That's the whole idea. If you come to America and you're Scottish and you, you do okay, then you have to go back to Scotland and be insulted in order to keep your feet on the ground, you see? <laughs> That's it. We're keeping your feet on the ground. So, my neighbours in Scotland, mm -hmm. wonderful people, the Nicholsons. Right. And oh, I know them. They're in Sky. On Sky, of course, yes, the Nicholsons. Yes, very nice people. I say this, when this goes out on YouTube, everyone on Sky is going, oh yes, Oh Nicholson. yeah, the Nicholsons, um, yes. I, I, I made a fantastic discovery with the Nicholsons, mm. which is, while... I, as you saw from my uh, Dick Van Dyke version of an American accent on my Simpsons thing, um, I'm not actually somebody who does accents. When I get drunk enough on Scotch whiskey at the Nicholson's, I slowly slip into a Scottish accent. And, uh, That's just a whiskey, Neil. It's, uh, <laughs> but, uh, either that or the Scotch actually brings out the accent. And I didn't know that I did this. The last time I went over to the Nicholson's, had a wonderful evening. You know, they pour out a tumbler of scotch yeah. and a cup of tea and give you a slice of cake and you go whiskey, tea, cake, yeah. whiskey, tea, cake. And then you <laughs> get to the end of the scotch and you go, okay, there we go. And they, you turn around and they fill it up again to the top and go back to the house. I had no recollection of what happened after that. It turned out I was drunk dialing people in a Scottish accent. <laughs> You say that like it's never been done before. <laughs> but you have a Scottish accent to start with. Yes, when you were drunk, that's darling. true, but that's only because have the whiskey hasn't worn off yet. Have you, <laughs> have you ever drunk dialed people in an English accent? Yeah, I, I used to drunk dial people all the time, uh, but not, not for a long time. I, now I sober dial them. <laughs> in a Scottish in accent. A Scottish yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I'd never done it. Well, I used to, I had some very great friends, uh, some, uh, Paul Whitehouse and Charlie Higson, who mm -hmm. were uh, both uh, writers and performers in London, were great friends of mine back in the day, and they're both Cockneys. So, whenever I, well, they're not Cockneys, but they're London boys, and when I was with them, I'd end up talking like that all the time. I was like, well, all right, geezer, well, hey, hey, like that. And they were like, why are you talking like that? And I'm like, I don't know, I just want to fit in. It's, it is, it's that weird contagion thing where you just want to be like everybody else, and yeah. suddenly, you know, you're talking like this. You're, yeah, all right. Yeah, hello, yeah, Craig. Hello. Yeah, yeah, you're looking job. good, yeah, all right. Yeah. I like your tardies, mate. Oh, yeah, it's very oh, nice. Oh, sparkly yeah, ball. Yeah. You got a nice little tardies. down there. wife, we never even talked about no, that. No, did lovely. you see it? Because you hadn't yeah, seen no, it the I've last time. Yeah, I've seen it. That's very nice. Rip a song. I did it. Oh, wow, they were married. Take a number. Me, I thought, yeah. Yeah, well, I, it actually feels very appropriate to be talking about Doctor Who in English accents. Yeah, I suppose so. We're way over time. So now... Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, have you seen uh, Zoe Deschanel's album now? Uh, no, I was going to actually say, so now that you know that the, the, the TARDIS is sexy, there is actually a reason why I made a grab for your TARDIS. Yeah, no, I when see. We're doing the yeah, it was, it, it was, it was a, it had a sexual connotation. It did. Yeah. Well, well you, can, you can have a poke around in it now if you want. <laughs> Look, the doors are open. This is yeah. better than going for the $50 or... Well, oh, well no, you is it now? Because we are out of time. So do you want to go for the... Ah, here are the, the new choices. <laughs> here are... You can get... 
You can have, you can go for the fifty dollars. You can go for the awkward pause, or you can go for it. I guess it's the time. <laughs> what do you want to try for? You gotta go for the fifty. Craig, what are the rules of Haggis and the Tardis? Uh, well, if, if you answer the question right, uh, then uh, you get to touch the Haggis, and I'll give you fifty dollars. Okay. You know, right. I think I'd like to go for that then. All right, then here you go. You ready? Yeah. Iceland is in the North Atlantic. Its capital city is Reykjavik. True or false? No, I don't like that. Uh, true. No, 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 no. no okay. No. Um, let's Forty. see. What? Zoe Deschanel going out. But she was all like. Got the money. Answered it right. Where's she who got? I mean, who, who would guess that? You for? don't look at that woman and go, she knows a lot about elephant teeth. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Neil. I don't know. Sometimes I look at her and I think things I'm surprised that I think. <laughs> All right, here's a question. Within $100, what was the average cost of a car in 1953? Uh, $300. No, I'm afraid it was $1,650. Close enough, though. $50. <laughs> you got to touch the tire this, I guess.